Hello there, and welcome to another video. This piece um, what we're going to be working on today is called the Sonata in G Minor, Opus Number Forty Nine, Number One by Ludwig van Beethoven. And today I'm going to be playing the first movement, which is the first um, part of this piece. Traditionally, with sonatas, um, sonatas are written where there are multiple movements. Now, movements is a fancy word for piece. And so when we have a sonata or a sonatina, we usually have um, an opening movement. Traditionally, it's a fast tempo. Um, then we have a second movement, which is usually a slow or more calm piece. And then finishing off with a third movement in the traditional form of that style of the sonata form. The third movement is usually very fast and robust and energetic. And usually, um, traditionally, these pieces were written for concert pianists or for musicians to play, in which the full sonata was performed all at once, one piece after another. And by playing each of the multiple movements, it really shows off the skill of the performer and also of the composer as well, too, especially because there is so much variety. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial today and uh, this presentation of this piece, I'm going to be playing just the first movement, um, just because there's a, a lot of wonderful things to discuss here. Now, this piece is uh, published in the Celebration Series 6th edition, the 2022 edition of the Royal Conservatory Level 8 uh, repertoire book. But it also, of course, it can be found in the uh, some of the great urtext or original versions of the piece by Beethoven, along with the other sonatas that he wrote during his lifetime. Um, this piece is in the key of G minor, and it's kind of brooding, which means it's kind of got a not just a sad quality, but there's some dramatic elements here. And this piece, traditionally, um, the first movement of a sonata is played um, at a, or written at a fast tempo, but this specific piece is different. Um, Mr. Beethoven creates the first movement of this sonata as a slow movement, which is kind of different, and we'll, we'll hear a few interesting things uh, along the way. There's a main opening theme, which is at the beginning of the piece. We call this theme one. And then there's also a theme two. With some interesting ornaments. So there are two themes in the exposition, which is the first part of the piece. Um, theme one begins at bar one, and theme two begins at bar 16. And that takes us right to the end of the exposition, which is usually the first of the three main sections of a sonata. The development section, which starts in bar 34, uh, contains very interesting ornaments in both the treble clef and bass clef. And it's very fun. And there's an interesting change of mood, um, and the composer develops or changes around some of the music from the opening section of the piece, and that's why this uh, part is called the development. Now, the last part of the piece, um, which is called the recapitulation, or the fancy title shortened is the recap, and the recap starts in bar 64. Um, and this part is where then we have the main theme return. And we stay in the key of G minor. Now, something that's very interesting about um, the recapitulation or the recap is that theme one and theme two of the exposition or the first main section of the piece come back in the recap, but traditionally the composer keeps both themes in the original key. Now, in in <coughs> excuse me, in the in the example of this piece with the exposition, theme one is in G minor, theme two in bar sixteen. goes to the relative major of B flat major. And you'll hear that um, when I play the piece, you'll hear that change in mood to kind of a more happy feel or style um, for theme two. Now, when we come back to the piece later, uh, the, the same themes in the recap, you'll hear how theme two is uh, the same music, but now in 
the um, key of G minor. So there was a change in mood. And it's very amazing how um, such interesting things like a change of key or a change of mood can really affect the different themes within the piece. Um, you'll also hear at the end of the piece a very dramatic ending, a dramatic coda. So now I'll play the piece called Sonata in G Minor, Opus 49, Number 1. Isn't that a fun piece? And so dramatic, too. I do hope you enjoy playing it. And uh, thank you again for watching. And we'll see each other next time. Thank you and take care.